start overseas with breaking news now. South Korea saying North Korea is gearing up for another launch. This comes as the UN Security Council is set to meet today to talk about a new round of sanctions on North Korea. This in response to not the fifth, but the sixth nuclear test they've conducted. North Korea said over the weekend that the test was an advanced hydrogen bomb. That doesn't sound good, does it? We're going to take a look at what the president has to say about this coming up in just a few moments. And here at home, we've got some breaking news as well. Police investigating a shooting. The victim walked to Skyline Hospital overnight, telling police that someone had shot him in the shoulder as he was driving around. As we get more information, we'll have an update on that shooting. And some breaking news now. There's another shooting victim that showed up at the hospital. A terrifying story telling police. News Channel 5's Blake Rosnowski is live at Vanderbilt Medical Center. Blake, good morning. So do we know what happened on this case, this shooting? Steve, we do have a few more details in this case. Very scary situation for this man who was simply just trying to drive down the interstate. The victim told police that he was driving down I-65 South near Rosa Parks Boulevard when all of a sudden he saw somebody trying to flag him down. And then that's when he says multiple shots were fired. He was able to get himself here to Vanderbilt University Hospital. We're told the incident happened sometime between 2 and 3 this morning. The victim was shot in the upper right shoulder. He is expected to be okay. We are working to dig up more details on a description of the suspect as well as the vehicle. And as soon as we have those details, we'll be sure to bring them to you. Live at Vanderbilt University, Blake Rosnowski, News Channel 5. Blake, thanks so much. And happening right now, search efforts will continue for a man that is missing in the Red River. News Channel 5's Dan Kennedy live in Clarksville for us this morning. Dan, the sun's starting to come up and we may be able to see that river you've been talking about there behind us that has really gotten close, a lot closer probably to the, to the roadway there than it had been. Right, because this was on Friday and, and that was the day we had all that rain. So all those creeks, all these rivers around the mid-state were uh, extra swollen and uh, big currents associated with these rivers. So yeah, peeking through these trees, we can sort of see the Red River this morning. This is where this 24 year old man was missing. But on Friday, it was much higher up to this parking lot almost where this young man had been standing. Uh, supposedly in a scuffle with some bouncers at a bar that backs up to this river. And that's when the young man went in search. Uh, searchers tried over the weekend to locate this man. No luck so far, so they're going to continue that search in about an hour. Eyewitnesses tell police that security had to come outside the electric cowboy bar and break up a fight between two men in the parking lot. They say that's when this 24 year old became, quote, belligerent towards the bouncers and went towards the water. They say he fell into a large puddle. He was challenging the bouncers to a fight. They say as he stood back up, that's when he was swept away by the fast moving water of the Red River. And all this again on Friday when uh, when rains were heavy and localized flooding was certainly a big deal here in the mid state. So in about an hour, we expect EMS crews Clarksville rescue uh, to continue the searches. We've also been told that the Coast Guard has been notified as the search continues for this 24 year old man missing now for several days in Clarksville's Red River. Reporting live in Montgomery County, Dan Kennedy, News Channel 5. Dan, thanks so much, and we hope to learn more now about a deadly car accident that happened in the Tennessee River over the weekend. This is just strange. It happened in Hardin County Saturday at a boat ramp in Saltillo. The Tennessee Highway Patrol telling us that two bodies were pulled from the water. One was the driver, Richie Weaver. The other one, a passenger named Ronnie Steele. Now listen to this. A guy actually found that car as he was launching his boat. His boat hit the top of the car because it was just under the surface of the water. Boy, that guy had to think, what in the world is happening? Investigators are still trying to find out why the two victims' car rolled down that boat ramp and went into the water in the first place. TWRA investigating a deadly boating accident that happened in Humphreys County. Michael Keel and Christopher Young died Saturday night on Turkey Creek. That's right there at the Eagle Bay Marina. They were hit. They hit a boat slip at a high rate of speed. The boat was actually partially underwater and on its side when the crews arrived. No one else was on board at that time. Some developing news now. Police are trying to find out who shot three people on the interstate. A big story over the weekend. Robertson County Sheriff's investigators say one young man died. Two more were 
hit and they're recovering at the hospital. It looks like someone shot the three yesterday morning while they were driving along I-24 East. Investigators do not think this attack was random either. They think it was targeted. It's unclear if they have any suspects this morning. I-24 was shut down for a while because of that. A suspected gunman is on the run. Two alleged partners in crime waking up in jail, though. Dontarius Johnson and a teen are both charged with shooting an 18-year-old a couple of weeks ago on Rio Vista Drive in Madison. Detectives say three gunmen forced their way into the home, shooting Ladarius Harns in the abdomen and then taking off with some cash. If you know who the third suspect is or where he is, call Crime Stoppers at 615-74-CRIME. We are just a few days away now from the jury selection in the first trial of a big murder case we followed literally for years now, the case of Holly Bobo. Jury selection begins Saturday in Hardin County for that guy, Zach Adams, one of three men charged with the nursing student's death. She was 19 years of age. It happened back in 2011. It's a kidnapping, rape and murder case. Police believe the suspects shot Holly in the head. Opening statements in that trial start a week from today. All right, some questionable bachelorette party decorations at a home in East Nashville have a lot of people talking and a lot of people ticked this morning. A poster with an explicit photo was hung on the side of this home on Porter Road at Creighton Avenue over the weekend. One local Airbnb host says, uh-uh, this is not a good representation of the short-term rentals. He stays upstairs so he can monitor what's going on at his property. David Cathro posted the picture in the East Nashville group. I guess there's a point where it could get a bit vulgar, but I don't think it happens a lot, and I think it's kind of cute. Not everybody thinks it's so cute. A Metro Council committee working on developing regulations for those short-term rentals. And the more of this we see, the more those regulations are going to be put into place quickly. The council could vote on it in October. And happy Labor Day to you today. We are going to have a very nice afternoon. The only thing this morning is that we do have some patchy fog developing and some of our locations here across the mid state. When you see those white and grays, that means visibility is down to less than a quarter of a mile. So if you're south of Rutherford County into Cannon, Coffee, even Warren County this morning, we are seeing some of that patchy fog also over towards Lawrence County and Giles County in southern Tennessee, seeing some foggy conditions for this morning. Here's a look at our Labor Day breakdown by 8 o'clock. We're into those mid 60s, upper 70s by 10 o'clock. Sunny skies staying with us all morning long during the afternoon. We'll see a few more clouds developing. We'll be in those lower 80s by 12, 85 by 2 and 87 by 4 o'clock. Here's our allergy report for today. We are seeing the grasses and weeds on the moderate side. That's because we've seen sunny skies, really dry conditions all throughout the week. Weekend. We will see some rain though that's going to help knock some of that pollen down and help some of our allergy sufferers once we start tomorrow. I'll break that down in a seven day forecast. We'll show you that next. Steve. Heather, thank you. And some breaking news. Now we talked about this at the top of the show. North Korea gearing up for a launch. What South Korea has to say about that nuclear standoff that's on the way. And a man is dead out west after running into flames at this popular burning man festival. Wow, what was this guy thinking? Investigators are trying to find out what went wrong. Some breaking news from overseas now. South Korea defense officials say they will continue to see signs of possibly more ballistic missile launches coming from Kim Jong-un and North Korea, including, and here's the scary one, an intercontinental ballistic missile. The report comes after some live fire drills in South Korea this morning and tough talk from the Trump administration. Here's Hannah Doba. South Korea's military says it carried out a live fire exercise this morning using fighter jets and long range ballistic missiles in a drill simulating an attack on North Korea's nuclear test site. The ongoing exercises are in response to the North's claims to have detonated a hydrogen bomb underground Sunday. The United Nations is also set to respond with an emergency Security Council meeting today. Hours after the rogue regime's nuclear test, President Trump responded while leaving church Sunday. Mr. President, will you attack North Korea? 
Secretary of Defense James Mattis says while the U.S. is not looking to annihilate North Korea, the president did ask to be briefed on all military options. Any threat to the United States or our allies will be met with a massive military response. Senator Lindsey Graham, a member of the Senate Armed Services Committee, said before Sunday's detonation, if the situation in North Korea doesn't change course, the U.S.'s use of force is inevitable. I am 100 percent certain that if Kim Jong-un con um, continues to develop missile technology that can hit America, if diplomacy fails to stop him, there will be an attack by the United States against that uh, against his weapon systems. Less than a month ago, the UN imposed its stiffest sanctions so far on the reclusive nation. In Adoba, CBS News. Hannah, thank you. This weekend's claimed hydrogen bomb test is North Korea's sixth nuclear test since 2006. Updates now from the White House this morning. President Trump expected to announce tomorrow he will be ending the protections for young immigrants brought to the country illegally as kids. The order will likely come with a six month delay. The president has been wrestling for months now with what to do with the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program. You've heard a lot about DACA. This is it. DACA has given thousands the ability to work legally in the U.S. for several years.